In Pokemon Infinite Fusion, the fan game with over 210,000 different Pokemon combinations, there are all sorts of designs. From cool, to cute, to creepy, to whatever this thing is. And the Pokemon with the most, well, whatever this thing is, fusions has to be Miltank. Clocking in at over 700 sprites which puts it at number seven out of the 466 different Pokemon that are in the game at the time of this recording. So after almost a year and nearly 50 runs, I think it's time for us to dip our toe in a little bit of milk. And what better way to do it than with a hardcore randomized Nuzlocke? That means if a Pokemon faints, it's considered dead. But level cap is the next leader's ace. No active items can be used in battle, and we're gonna be playing on set mode. If you haven't already and you liked the video by the time you get to the end of it, please consider subscribing to the channel. And it would really help out if you could leave a like on the video and maybe even a comment. The only way that I'm going to be able to continue to grow is with all of your support, so anything you can do to help me out, I really appreciate. But anywho, let's jump into it. Starting off in Professor Rogue's lab, we're going to go ahead and take a quick look at our potential starters. And those are Shelter. Lavatar and Charmander. And I honestly think the entire purpose of a Miltank run is to take the goofiest possible fusions and make them utterly unstoppable. So we're gonna go ahead and grab Shelter. Fusing up our Shelter with Miltank, we're gonna get ourselves this uh, silly little Milder. Once we send Scallop up against Chartar, it only takes us one water gun to take it down. And let's meet a bunch of friends. Starting off on Route 1, we run into a Clink. On Route 2, we get a Venipede, a Shedbat in Viridian Forest, and a Zurich on 22. First up, we're going to go ahead and fuse up Clink with Miltank, and we are going to get this silly little set of gears. Next up, we're going to be fusing Venipede with our Miltank, and this thing is honestly, is honestly kind of cute. It looks like it should be in a bug's life. Next, fusing up with Zubat's going to get us this little cutie pie. Just the flesh color is a little off-putting. But I do love the eyes. And finally, we're gonna go ahead and fuse up with Shininja for this almost invincible Milinja. Over on Route 22, we run into Rando again, and we can see that he's holding a coffee in his hands. And written on it, almond milk. All right, nut boy, it's time to put you in your place. Muju style. Going for a stomp, we bring it down into the red and manage to get the flinch, so on the following turn, we can safely get the KO. When his starter comes in, we go for the same thing, and two more stomps, stomp out, this nut, we're gonna grab ourselves a Voltorb in the Secret Garden. And when we fuse up, we are gonna get this hilarious little Milorb. Now it's time for face off against Brock and his bug Pokemon. He starts things off with a Venipi and I send in Flick. Going for a defense curl, it, it gets disabled by the Venipi. But it's already done exactly what we needed to as we start rolling out. And after two stacks of that, we take the Venipi safely down. When Yagpoke comes in, it only takes one more shot for the KO and our Boulder Badge. Heading back over to Viridian because I forgot to do it before, we grab ourselves a Monferno as our gift Pokemon. And we grab ourselves a Gumi over on Route 3. Oh, and then our Magikarp was randomized into a Magikarp. Using up Gumi with one of our Mill Tanks, we're gonna get this silly little Milmi. Outside of Mount Moon, we run into Nurse Joy, tending to this wounded Geodude. Before Brock can rush over, we go ahead and give it a glass of milk. And as Brock approaches, the Geodude looks up from his glass with a huge milk mustache. And then he goes, got milk? And we find a Remoraid inside of Mount Moon. At the back of Mount Moon, we run into Team Rocket, who's attempting a triple fusion. And we know it's a bad idea, because Team Rocket's doing it. We launch from our hands a cup of whole milk. Smashing into their machine, short-circuiting it, and the entire thing explodes. And Team Rocket blasts off again. On Route 4, we find ourselves a Fletchling. Before facing off against Rando on Nugget Bridge, we are going to fuse up our Fletchling for this cute little Maling. Next up, fusing Magikarp with Miltank gets us this guy. Then while leveling up a bit, our Milling is going to go ahead and evolve. And this time, it's a lot more excited to be holding that cheese. And then Milkarp's gonna go ahead and evolve into Mildose. We run into Rando again over on Nugget Bridge where he's clenching his stomach. He appears to be in some sort of pain. He explains to us that cow milk is not part of his culture. But I <laughs> And thus he's lactose intolerant. <laughs> I can't 
say this. <laughs> I tell him. <clears throat> uh, I tell him he'll feel better after his utterma. And the battle begins. <laughs> uh, I'm gross. I'm not exactly sure how long that laughing fit took, but we took down Rando's first few Pokemon without much of an issue until he leads out into his starter. To that point, we go ahead and swap out our Gouda and send in Yum, tanking an Ember. A wing attack does about 25%, and then we go for a bite, but we miss, so we swap out into Dog. Unfortunately, his next Ember burns us as a bite does basically nothing now that we're burnt. And after we get him down into the red, we're gonna go ahead and swap out, sending in Milky. On Route 24, we find a Riolu. After evolving Riolu, we're gonna go ahead and fuse it up. And this guy is just got like the biggest ice cream cone you've ever seen. While getting ready to face off against Misty, our Yum is gonna go ahead and evolve into a Milbat. Lick's also gonna go ahead and evolve, waking up a little bit, standing up, and proclaiming, I am World Tank. Misty put randomized into a water Pokemon, and that doesn't seem very random, but her first Pokemon out is Abduck. We have Gudu go for a spark, grabbing the Oko. Once Solanite comes in next, we go for another spark, bringing it down to about a third. And on the following turn, she doesn't even bother healing up, but we also don't KO it because of the charm. And after she heals up, we go for a handful of other hits, and then we take it down, defeating Misty. We find ourselves a Carvana on Route 5, a Ladybug over on Route 6, a Meowth over on Route 11, and a Badoo in Diglett's Cave. We go and beat this guy up again for another fossil. Over on the SSM, we run into Rando again. And hold on a second, what's that he's eating? Gelato! He should be eating full cream ice cream. Rando starts off by sending in a Ralph Honey, and we sit in our vanilla. And the funny thing is, this sprite actually looks like it has kind of a stomach ache. But after going for a Metal Claw, we decide to switch things up and go for a Swords Dance. And after stacking up two of them, another Metal Claw takes the bunny down. Char Char's out next, and going for a Brick Brick, we manage to grab ourselves the Oko. His third Pokemon out is Magatrum, and this thing is absolutely wicked as a Metal Claw comes in, getting him way down into the red. After Rando heals up once, we take it down to two more hits. His final Pokemon, Sunreal, comes in, and a Brick Break brings him way down into the red as he goes ahead and sets up a Leech Seed. But with one more smack of the fist, we take him out. And Rando, you better be eating ice cream next time I see you. Lieutenant Surge has been randomized into a Dragon Trainer on this run, and he starts things off by sending in his Axe Bars. I legitimately forgot that Dunsparce was in this game, but of course it is. It's a Gen 2 Pokemon. Why wouldn't it be? Anywho, after setting up three Sword Stances, we go ahead and go for a Brick Break, grabbing the KO. Palatini comes in next, and it's another just like little long boy. But anywho, Brick Break, done. His final Pokemon is Dragaflora, and it goes for a Twister doing a decent amount of damage, popping our Berry, but only one hit from us is more than enough to earn our Thunder Badge. All right, cool, so we find ourselves a Duskull over on nine. We find ourselves an Elekid over on Route 10. We find ourselves a Hound Hour and Rock Tunnel. Our Honedge is randomized into a Charmander. We grab a Nidoran Female over on 8. A Pseudo Wudo over on 7. A Poly Sand in the game corner. A Drowsy over on 16. We're gonna go ahead and fuse Poly Sand up with Miltank, and we are gonna get our silly little barn. And I love that this thing only has one weakness. While getting ready to face off against Giovanni, our Gouda goes ahead and evolves into Melode, which is an old favorite of mine from a very, very early run. Over in Pokemon Tower, we run into Rando yet again, where we see him eating an entire wheel of cheese. That's more like it, Rando, but we still have to have a Pokemon battle. Rhyreno comes in first up against our barn. Going for a bulldoze, we manage to take it down in just one hit. Milosaur is out next, going for the Seismic Toss, we take it just above half, as another one brings him way down into the red. And as Rando goes through both of his potions, we just keep on spamming Seismic Toss and drinking our milk until eventually we take it down. 
Chartar comes in next, and two bulldozes take it out. Which leads into his final Pokemon, Duo Chow, who it only takes one hit from. After our battle, we run into this old guy who's being harassed by Team Rocket. I see how easily they drag him up the stairs. If only he had consumed more calcium throughout his lifetime, he wouldn't be suffering from osteoporosis now, and he would have been able to free himself. But alas, there's nothing we can do here. Alrighty then, right before facing off against Giovanni, our Smoke Jenner is going to go ahead and evolve into Milflame. After fighting our way through Team Rocket's secret base, we run into Giovanni. I'm not 100% sure what's going on here since they blew up their triple fusion machine, but I do see that he is consuming a glass of water. And what the hell is that? He starts off by sending in a Blast V, and we send in our Vanilla. Scared of a fire move, we go ahead and swap out, sending in our Barn as he goes for a Flame Charge. On the next turn, we set up a Sand Tomb as he bulks up. Another Flame Charge does a little bit more damage, and we come in with a Bulldoze, taking him just below half. And after he activates our Berry, a Seismic Toss brings him way down into the red, where the Sand Tomb can pick up the KO. Outdex is Mervile, so we're going to swap out and send Vanilla back in. Falling for the taunt, I realized that I made an absolutely grave error. Until I remember this thing is dark, not flying, and a Brick Break takes care of it quickly enough. His final Pokemon Chat turn comes in and sends it to Rock and only takes us two more hits to take it down, defeating Giovanni. And we hand him a glass of the white stuff. And now it's time for us to take on Erica and her ghost Pokemon. She starts things off by sending in a Mimidos, and I send in Dog. After breaking his disguise, we go for an Aqua Tail, taking it down to about 50%. On the following turn, we take it way down to the red as Erica goes ahead and heals up with a Hyper Potion. And now that our attack's been not lowered a few times with the Charm, we swap out, sending in Vanilla. After going for three Sword Stances, we eventually connect with the Zen Headbutt, grabbing ourselves the KO. Fahrenheit's out next, and I absolutely love this sprite, and his end headbutt isn't quite enough to take it down. After getting frozen solid, seriously, what are the odds I swap into Gouda? Who goes for a spark, managing to get the paralysis, but we're knocked down below half, activating our berry. But on the following turn, we take it out. Her final Pokemon, Porty Edge, comes in, and we go for a spark before we get slammed down to just 45 HP. Swapping out again into Dog, and only takes us a couple more turns to take down the Pori Edge and secure our Rainbow Bat. On our way over to Future City, we're going to grab ourselves a Ferris Seed, a Munchlax, a Shield on for a pinch. In Future City, it's time for us to take on Koga and his ghost Pokemon. Seems to be a running theme here in Kanto. He starts off with Ducile, and we send in Vanilla. After going for a couple of Swords Dances and getting burned and smacking ourselves in the face, we eventually break free for the Oko. When Probo Noir comes in, we take it down to about half after the first hit as he sets up a Sandstorm. Which doesn't hurt us, but it does hurt him. Anyway, it puts him down low enough for another Shadow Claw to take it out. When Gas Floor comes in, one hits all the tanks, and he's sending in his Duskape as his final Pokemon. And this is where I make a fatal... Error. I don't consider the fact that Koga hasn't used either of his potions yet, and I get taken out by my burn for the first loss of our run. Sending a smoke jetter, I can clean things up quickly enough, and we earn our soul badge. Alrighty, first things first, we're gonna go ahead and fuse up Mil Tank with Charmander to get ourselves Char Tank. Char Tank's then gonna Char Tank is then gonna go ahead and evolve into Char Tank. But don't worry, everybody, it's going to evolve one more time again into Chartank. While fighting our way through Silco, Yama's going to go ahead and evolve into its final form, Milbat. Our Lapras was randomized into a Machamp. After suffering everybody in Silco ice cream, we run into Rando, who's upset that we haven't given him his pint yet. Finally, my boys overcome his lactose intolerance. We celebrate together the only way we know how by dueling our monsters and chugging back gallons of milk. Dewdrop comes in first, just to remind me that Dunspark does indeed exist, and I send in Yum. A Cross Poison does an okay amount of damage as he goes for a double edge, slamming us down to about half. 
Swapping in the noodle, there's not a whole lot Rando can do here, so he just goes ahead and glares us. And then can't do anything until we take it out after a couple of body slams. Tartar's out next, and I absolutely hate doing this. I almost never use Shininja Fusions, but when you can utterly devastate your opponent, you might as well go for it. And by the way, this Magnezine Fusion is absolutely awesome. And Pori Trio is super cool too. But once he uses Lock on him, super scared, so I go ahead and swap out, sending in Barn. We trade back and forth for a while, and I get down pretty low and activate my Berry, but ultimately, we take it down. His final Pokemon, Clefleth, comes in, going for a Cosmic Power to power up a little bit. Once we set up a Sandstorm, somehow the structure drinks some milk. And after throwing it over the house a couple of times, we take it down, defeating Rando. Rando then lets me know that Giovanni's here in Silphco, meeting with the Silph President. He's trying to get a bunch of Master Balls from him so he can breed some kind of super bird. I don't really know what's going on. And this is completely unacceptable. You can't milk a bird, I don't think. I haven't tried, but I'm pretty sure you can't. We have to stop him, no matter what. And the double battle begins. Slow Dash and Cross come in on his side as we go ahead and send a Yum and Treesaur. We go for a slam on the slow dash, taking it down a little bit, as the Heracross then goes for a discharge, bringing the slow dash way down as the red. We go and swap out, sending in Noodle as Giovanni heals his Pokemon back up, and Treesaur goes for a burn on Galcross. Following up with a Confuse Ray on the Click Cross, it goes ahead and smacks itself in the face as the Treesaur starts stacking up curses. Going for a Shadow Sneak, Lacrosse then goes ahead and uses the Discharge again on his own Pokemon, and Treesaur keeps on cursing itself. On the following turn, we take out the Lacrosse, and Giovanni sends in Venadra. Neither of his Pokemon can hit me, so after doing a bunch of chip damage, we eventually take down the Venomoth Fusion. This Treesaur really wants to die because it just keeps on spamming Destiny Bond, as Quagtor comes in as his final Pokemon. Going for a Phantom Force, we do some pretty massive damage to the Quagtor, and then we take it down on the following turn. With only Slow Dash remaining, we just smack it in the face a few times, and we eventually take it down, defeating Giovanni and ejecting Team Rocket from Saffron City. For saving the Silk President, we get a Squirtle. Okay, the game must know what it's doing because Sabrina is also a Ghost Trainer. She starts off with Duskwack, and we send in our dog. After setting up a couple of Dragon Dances, we do get burned, but then he goes ahead and goes for a Curse for some reason, cutting his HP in half, which leaves him low enough for us to get the Oko. Jaclops is in next, and I go ahead and swap into Gouda. After a couple of discharges, we bring it down to about 50% and manage to get the Paralysis. And after a third one, she heals back up. We just keep on spamming discharges as Sabrina continues to try to heal up, and eventually, we manage to take it down. Out third is this really cool looking Leaf Blade, and we go ahead and swap into Yum, going for a Cross Poison, and it doesn't do that much. We follow up with a handful of Leech Lifes, taking the bad boy down. Her final Pokemon, Miss Blim, comes in, going for a Growl, which I didn't think at this high of a level it would have Growl, but whatever. We swap out into Barn, and then I realize that this thing is flying, and I don't know what I was thinking, so I swap out again, sending in Gouda. We get knocked down into the red, so I swap out, sending Yum back in, and I just start going for Leech Life, and eventually, we manage to take it out, defeating Sabrina. On Route 21, we find ourselves a Golet. The Absol on Cinnabar Island was randomized into Lobelossum, and we find a Corsola inside Pokemon Mansion. Our Helix Fossil gives us a Growlithe, our Root Fossil gives us an Unknown, our Armor Fossil gives us a Tentacool, and we get a Stuffle from our Jaw Fossil. And last but certainly not least, Old Amber gives us a Rhyperior. After meeting a bunch of new friends, it's now time for us to take on Blaine and his Ground Pokemon, which is still related to Ghosts because the ground is where the dead things are. He starts off with Duo King, and we start off with Dog. After three Dragon Dances, we go with an Aqua Tail, grabbing the KO. Fly Knight comes in, and this is one heck of a sprite, but it only takes one shot, which is then going to lead into his Fly Knight, who also goes down in just one. Wimpswine comes in last, and with the Pacha Berry, it manages to hold on, and then heal up, but without its berry, it doesn't stand a chance, baby. We grab ourselves a Meganium on our way over to Mount Ember. We meet up with Giovanni and the rest of Team Rocket yet again over at Mount Ember, where not only is he mastered Triple Fusion even though I totally blew up that machine, he's also captured all three Kanto Legendary Birds, 
fuse them, and now he's producing his own patented Team Rocket fight milk. This cannot stand. It will not stand. Nobody. I have cornered the market with my milk tanks. And you will not take this from me, Giovanni. Zetmokuna comes in, and they can't do a darn thing to Noodle. So I hate that I do this. I have never done this before. I have never used a Shit Ninja fusion so callously before. But you will not take my business from me. Giovanni Rocketson. I don't know what Giovanni's last name is. I don't know if he has a last name. Someone let me know what his last name is if you know what it is. Anyways, we beat him. Team Rocket leaves. Utterly embarrassing. Let's gather up some birds. First, Moltres is randomized into a Dragonite. Then Zapdos is randomized into Jirachi. And finally, Articuno is randomized into... Articuno? For our eighth and final batch, we have to face off against Giovanni one more time, and it turns out he's been randomized into a normal trainer, which is what he normally is in modern mode. And this son of a gun, his first Pokemon, Milther. With Yum In, we go for a wake up slap, doing a decent amount of damage before we follow up with a leech life. Then going for a cross poison, we bring him down just below half, where he goes ahead and heals up. Swapping out into Char Tank, he heals up again as we go for a flamethrower, and a wake up slap does in a massive amount of damage to us. Realizing that this thing is flying and not bug, we swap out, sending in our Gouda, who takes a huge hit before a discharge gets the KO. Next up is Pertops, and going for a discharge, we bring it way down into the red as an assurance activates our berry. And second, discharge gets the KO. Regaliga comes in next, and we swap out, sending Char Tank back in, going for a flamethrower, bringing it down pretty low on the first turn as he goes ahead and swaps out, sending in another Mil Tank fusion. Are you for real, Giovanni? We swap Mil Tank out, sending Gouda back in, who gets slapped really hard, and a discharge brings him down pretty low as another slap brings us to just 21 HP. But I know my Gouda's faster than this Toad, and we take it down. This little Noodle Mess is back in, so we switch back out into Char Tank, who can tank his dead headbutt, go for a flamethrower, and grab the KO. Kyogre comes in as his final Pokemon, so we're gonna swap out, sending in our barn, and an Origin Pulse slams us for nearly 50%, but it does up our defense for what that's worth. Another Origin Pulse brings us down to just 42 HP as our berry heals us up and we trap this thing in a sand tomb. For some reason, it goes for an Ice Beam and this allows us to use Milk Drink to heal back up a little bit. Not exactly sure why he switched over to Ice Beam when he could have definitely KO'd us with another Origin Pulse, but after a bunch of Seismic Tosses, we take the bad boy down and we've earned our eighth badge. On Victory Row, we grab ourselves a Zuyum and Ente is randomized into Latias. When crafting our final team, first we're gonna take a Beware and we're gonna fuse it up with Miltank. And the result is absolutely adorable. I love Beware's fusions. Next up, we're gonna go ahead and fuse up with Hydragon and this is just utterly horrifying. And with Blast Eyes, you all know the drill. This isn't the first time we've used it. It won't be the last time we use Blast Tank. And finally, rounding out the group with Jirachi. I think that this little stuffy boy is adorable. Then finally with Golurk, we're going to go ahead and fuse up with Miltank, and we now have our farmer. All right, everybody, now that we're ready to face off against the Elite Four, let's take a look at our team. Starting things off, we have Noodle with Zen Headbutt, Confuse Ray, Phantom Force, and Shadow Sneak. Farmer Betty with Shadow Punch, Earthquake, Fire Punch, and Ice Punch. Stuffed with Shadow Claw, Earthquake, Brick Break, and Milk Drink. Unlimited Calcium with Ice Beam, Surf, Flash Cannon, and Milk Drink. Utterly Horrible with Flamethrower, Shadow Ball, Dragon Pulse, and Thunderbolt. And finally, we have Milky Dreams with Psychic, Thunderbolt, Shadow Ball, and Milk Drink. All right, let's get started. First up on the Elite Four is gonna be Lorelei and her Ice Pokemon. She starts off with Porycell and I said it utterly horrible. 
going for a flamethrower, bring it down pretty low as Lorelei goes and heals up on the following turn. And after using both of her full restores, we take it down. Glorath's up next as we do about 60% on our first hit. And once again, it only takes two. Artinium is an absolutely majestic sprite, but after just two shots, we managed to take it out. And what can be said about Weave Sion and Tortoras? Well, it also only took two hits for each of them as well. And we're moving on to Bruno, who's been randomized into a Dragon-type trainer. Hey, maybe he won't stink this time. He starts off with Gorluff and we send in Milky Dreams. A Thunderbolt does a lot less than I expected it to, and following up with a Psychic, we grab a crit, getting it way down into the red. I swap it into Noodle so I can avoid the dig. And after Bruno heals up, I go for the Confusion. And after a couple of Phantom Forces, we dig it out. Drag a Wiles out next, so we swap out into Unlimited Calcium. And after taking two pretty decent hits, we get it down just below 50%, and he swaps out into Venetair, who gets knocked down after just two smacks. When Zectile comes in, an Ice Beam does basically nothing as his Zen Headbutt hits us down low enough to activate our Berry. We then swap in a Farmer Betty going for an Earthquake, bringing him down to about a third, and this thing is super chonky. I know it's a Zekrin, but it's also a Toted Isle. Any new Dragon Wild comes back in after we grab the KO, and an Earthquake gets it super low as we're Dragon Tailed out, setting in Milky Dreams, who can then clean up. Pertrum says final Pokemon, and this thing is so goofy. And after three attacks, we managed to ground the KO, and we're moving on to Agatha. Agatha's been randomized into a poison type trainer, which is actually her modern mode typing. And to be honest, her normal typing also basically. She starts off with Slight Rule, and we set in Stuffed, where one crit earthquake is enough for the Oko. Crotoon's up next, which we get down pretty low with an earthquake as Agatha decides to use both of her full restores before ultimately swapping out, sending in Girakuna. And after just two smacks, we take down the Demon Cocoon. Crotum comes out just to get taken down, and this leads into Muffion. A gunk shot brings us down pretty low, activating our berry, and we need to swap out, so we do, into Farmer Betty. And while the gunk shot doesn't do that much damage to Farmer Betty, it does manage to get the poison off. And after taking another hit and activating our berry, she withdraws, sending in Clefbok. Swapping out again, sending in Utterly Horrible, it starts stacking Minimizes, and then slaps us with its non-existent hands. Eventually, we connect with a couple of Flamethrowers and manage to get the burn off so we can safely take it down. Muffion then comes back in just to get taken out, and we defeat Agatha. Lance also refuses to randomize too much, turning into a flying trainer. And these birds are going to produce enough milk to destroy me, starting with Beatrice who, after using both of Lance's full restores, goes down quickly enough to our Ice Beams. Galvin Giga comes in next, going for in agility, as an Ice Beam brings him down to about half. Swapping then into Blast Dactyl, and this thing is a wicked sprite. I go for a Flash Cannon, thinking maybe it's Rock, but you silly, silly boy, he's a flying trainer. So after we get knocked down to our own berry, a couple of Surfs take it out. When this freaky spider comes back in, we can safely go for an ice beam, grabbing the KO. Fear Source out next, and oh my god, I really need to do a scissor run, huh? I decided to take a little sip from my cannon before going back in for some ice beams and surfs, taking it down. Arcanos comes in last, and we swap out into Farmer Betty, taking a Fire Fang. After punching him in the face, we swap out into Milky Dreams where it managed to get the burn off on us, activating our berry, and we get him down to basically nothing. But fortunately on the following turn, we get the KO, defeating Lance. We enter the champion's chamber where I think Rando might have gotten a little out of hand. I see him playing Edward 40 hands with himself, but instead of a 40 ounce of malt liquor, is two half gallons of milk. His shirt open, got exposed. My boy, what have you become? His milk mustache dripping down into a milk beard, the likes of which I've never seen. We have to end this. No man can tank that much milk. 
With this all tape in first, it only takes us two Dragon Pulses to take it out. He then goes for a starter Charitar, and I love how squished this little boy is. Oh my gosh. And we swap out into Unlimited Calcium. We can take a Flamethrower, no problem. Then going for a Surf, we bring it down to about half as it gets us locked up in a Fire Spin. After a random use of the Full Restore, we go for for another Surf, getting a crit and getting him way down into the red. And after Rando heals up another three times and we get him down to 50% again, he swaps out sending in Typhdos, who is a wicked sprite. How have I never seen this one before? A Surf on him brings him way down into the red after the Sandstorm damage, and we can safely take him down on the following turn. With Chartar back in, we outspeed, grabbing the KO on it as well. Spirit Arc's in next, and we're gonna swap out, sending in Stuffed, taking a Dark Pulse. A Sucker Punch then does some okay damage to us as we go for a Shadow Claw, doing barely anything. After getting flinched by a Dark Pulse, we heal up with our Berry. And we go for a Brick Break, grabbing the KO. S-Files in next, and this is another really neat sprite. This is the cool thing about randomizers sometimes, and then I get KO'd. Sending in Milky Dreams, we go for a Shadow Ball, doing a decent amount of damage, as it follows up with a Psychic. Another Shadow Ball takes down the rest of its health, getting us the KO. His final, his final Pokemon, Kalfa Slash, comes in, and after a couple of Shadow Balls, we manage to take it down and defeat Milky Rando. And that, my friends, is how I beat a Pokemon Infinite Fusion Hardcore Randomized Nuzlocke using only Miltank Fusions. If you like the video, please make sure you show your support down below by giving the video a little thumbs up, maybe leaving a comment, maybe even subscribing. Over 50,000 of you check out my videos every month, and I have a lot fewer subscribers than that. So please, it would mean so much to me if you could just hit that button. But anywho, I'll catch you all in the next video. See ya.